Good morning, everybody. Those are around here and at home or in other places around our university. Um, we, we will go now for the last session in the morning. Um, I would like to start by um, congratulating the organization for this event uh, and the possibility of, of having here um, a subject related with One Health, but also with chemistry. Uh, and uh, I would like to welcome uh, Isabel Mafra, who is a food engineer that works uh, in the laboratory, the associate laboratory of green chemistry, LDAKV. Um, I would like to say first that the green chemistry concept uh, emerged uh, last century uh, around the 80s, 90s. Um, and this concept arose due to the need of changing chemistry. In, in what way? Um, this con concept thinks chemistry in a way that you redu reduce the risks. So you are supposed to use this concept to make reactions with an economy of atoms, to, to, to make those reactions in a, in a sustainable way by reducing the risks, for instance, changing the heating systems and also uh, other areas in which we, we believe that the risks around the production uh, of chemicals and processes can be reduced. In terms of the area of, of work of Isabel, Isabel works in food authentication and food quality and safety. And this area is a major component of, of green chemistry and sustainability. Because as you know, we all need food, <laughs> humans, animals, plants. And so uh, many, many chemical products are uh, around this problematic. So the, the area in which uh, Isabel works uh, in food quality and safety, most of you are well aware of this, of these concepts, quality and safety, they go together. But also another important uh, parameter is the authentication of food. Uh, and I think that most of you, like myself, we are curious to, to hear Isabel's on this, uh, on this uh, talk. Thank you, Isabel, for being here. And it's yours. The well, page. First, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And also thank you for the organization and particularly to Professor Maria Rangel for inviting me to, to give a, a, a little bit overview of um, our work in our laboratory. Um, my presentation will, is entitled Food Authentication as Key Issue in Food quality and safety. Uh, this research has been developed, as Professor Conceição said, in Requinte, um, LAQV, uh, but uh, um, everything has been done mainly in Faculty of Pharmacy, which is uh, uh, where we work daily. Um, so, first I will contextualize food quality uh, is directly or indirectly related with health. Why? Because of the nutrition composition, nutritional value, which is, can be health promoting, um, disease prevention. Uh, on the other side, it can be the presence, eventual presence of contaminants from chemical sources, microbiological, allergenic or toxic, uh, might, pose, um, might pose health risks for the consumers. Um, food sustainability is related with the environmental uh, production of food that might affect climate, biodiversity, water and soil. And because um, this is related with low or not low use of resources and low waste uh, production of which is undesirable in food uh, uh, industry. Um, on the other side, food authenticity. Uh, regards the prevention of frauds, 
the detection of adulteration that relates relates to the origin, species of origin, geographical origin, uh, organic or not organic, the presence of genetically modified organisms, also the production methods, and globally it regards labeling compliance. So this is will be the main focus of my presentation regarding food authenticity. Um, I will describe food authenticity, why assessing food authenticity, how to assess it, uh, focusing mainly on DNA-based methods and some application examples. Uh, so I, I searched from some definitions about food authenticity in the literature and selected a few of them, which I think most simple. Uh, food authenticity is defined as food being authentic. Authentic food is described as a match between the food product characteristics and the corresponding food product claims. And most simply, food authentic is when a food is what it says it is. On the other side, a food fraud is a collective term encompassing the deliberate and intentional substitution addition, tampering, and misrepresentation of food, uh, food ingredients or food packaging, labeling, production information or food mislabeling, misleading statements made about the product with the aim of economic grain, gain, uh, which the main problem is that might impact uh, the consumer health. Um, well, food adulteration can be divided in intentional or not intentional, unintentional accidental adulteration. Um, when it is intentional adulteration, it might be simply a food fraud for economic gain, which is not uh, desirable. And worse of it, it is like um, a driven arm to cause uh, um, injury to health of the consumers, which uh, it is called food defense, but I think I should call it like food terrorism or something, some action like that. Um, when the, the adulteration is like unintentional, accidental, it might be caused by food contamination, like chemical contamination I spoke about a little earlier, or microbiology contamination uh, that can harm the, the health of consumer. Um, other um, type of adulteration, not intentionally, might uh, alter the properties of food, uh, which uh, um, can lower the value of the products the consumer is expecting. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Um, so the main, the main types of food adulterations are uh, mainly the total par or partial substitution of the higher commercial value of species or constituents uh, with other with lower value or simply adding the present, uh, the, uh, adding undeclared constituents in the, in the food. Uh, would, the problem is that might cause health problems for the consumers, particularly in the case of undeclared uh, ingredients that might be potentially allergenic, or the presence, for instance, of genetically modified organisms, particularly if they are not authorized in the European Union. Another implication regards ethical uh, issues uh, regarding the choice um, of religions, uh, lifestyles, or uh, such as vegetarianism, dietetics, sensorial, or ecologic, that consumers have, uh, have the right to know what they are eating. So globally, food authenticity is directly related with food safety. Uh, a problem of labeling compliance and complying with legislation and of course, general overview quality of food. Uh, to assess food authenticity, there is a huge number of analytical methods uh, that should be critically selected according to our purpose. What are we going to, to identify if detecting some target ingredient, detecting some species, uh, the addition of oil, for instance, the addition of sugar and so on. So depending on that, we should critically choose, uh, choose uh, mainly targeting, uh, sorry, uh, targeting uh, uh, chemical markers 
um, based on chromatographic or spectroscopic methods mainly, um, or biomolecular markers, particularly if you want to identify uh, the addition of a known species. Um, in this case, uh, we should target protein or proteins or DNA. This, I will focus now on proteins, proteins methods uh, that could be targeted for, to, to identify a species of origin. The main methods rely on electrophoresis of proteins, monochemical assays like ELISA, which I think are the main used, and also um, chromatography of proteins. Uh, the main problems, is particularly with immunochemical assays, regards when the, the, the food is processed, they might be degraded and give false negative results. Um, on the other side, they are highly prone to crossing reactivity with other untarget species and give false negatives. And of course, in the case of immunological, immunochemical assays, they, they rely on the antibody availability, which we can find easily if there are, for instance, uh, kits, available kits for the analysis. Well, on the other side, DNA molecules, they have high integrity, high stability and integrity, even after autoclaving processing for in, that reaches high temperatures like 121 degrees Celsius, um, with great advantages for processed foods because they, they are highly um, and they contain highly degraded proteins and they are complex matrices and the, the, the advantage of the high specificity and sensitivity are um, uh, a, a great um, positive, very positive for these essays um, besides the precision of these essays. So this I will focus mainly on this type of essays what have been developed in the past years in our laboratory. Well, starting with the beginning, PCR, most of you, of course, know what consists PCR, but it's the basis, the basis of all the methods I will present in, in the next presentation, next word. They, they, it consists on the amplification of a target sequence, which we critically, we selected specifically to be specific for one species or one group of species or so on and uh, conferred with the, with the primers, the oligonucleotides specifically designed for the purpose. And after um, more than 30 cycles, mostly, we can have millions of copies of the target region. And after that, we can uh, analyze, we can study, we can have the results of our uh, study uh, depending on the objective. But the problem is for this to work, <laughs> it is important to have uh, pure DNA extract, which is, in the case of food is not, not so easy as uh, extracting DNA from uh, animal or plant tissues that we, the, the, the cells are um, entire, are old cells and in food we mostly have uh, um, components of cells, not all cells. Uh, so DNA extraction is a critical step prior to PCR um, because we are challenged to have DNA with integrity enough in enough integrity, purity and quantity. This is a highly affected by processing. We mostly have fragments below 400 base pair. Um, and another problem of food is the high number of uh, components, inhibitor components like proteins, polysaccharides, lipids, phenolics. Besides, we can have uh, the contaminants from the, the DNA extraction method, uh, like the solvents that can be still there in the extract. So this is a, normally a challenge that we have to overcome after testing different methods of DNA extraction. The classical one is CTA-based method. Uh, most laboratories know this method, particularly we focus on the extraction of DNA from plant uh, tissues. Uh, normally it works uh, well for plant tissues and several kinds of samples, but uh, it takes a full day to, to do all the procedure. 
uh, that is uh, time consuming and also it depends on the expertise of the operator it, if it is not <laughs> experienced on that normally the first the first results are not so good in terms of purity alternatively we can use uh, commercial kits that these these two particularly for plants and the other for food they work quite well in most of our food matrices uh, after having uh, so the, the high, high quality or enough quality DNA extracts, we can move for the, the application of, the, of our selected assay depending on the purpose. Um, I will describe uh, then examples of species sp specific PCR, quantitative real time PCR. I will describe DNA barcoding, although not showing uh, the application, but uh, DNA barcoding, we can relate bar the use of barcodes with high resolution melting analysis and all these methods required sequencing at any stage for method development for development for validation as well as in silico study by informatics is highly demanded uh, so I will give now an overview of uh, real-time PCR, which consists on the monitorization of the reaction in real time, uh, avoiding problems of agarose gel electrophoresis, uh, lowering the, the time of analysis, the, lowering the cross-contamination and the limit of detection. It is highly sensitive. And uh, it is, um, the, the kinetics is highly favorable when using short fragments, which is highly desirable in, case, in the case of, uh, of food analysis with the degraded matrices. Finally, it provides quantitative analysis, which is uh, um, a big issue in, in food authentication. Uh, so um, following the amplification, we can, um, we can have the, let me see the where ah, the city value the city value is the, the value that we, we can obtain at the early stage of amplification at the beginning of the exponential stage and that can provide us uh, using uh, standard dna um, from for instance from a serial diluted dna extracts we can have a quantitative model with the city values versus the log of the DNA amount. Uh, this essay, uh, this type of essay should follow some performance criteria as the most calibration curve, a correlation coefficient should be higher than 0.98. Uh, but particularly in this essay, the PCR, PCR efficiency very important should be between 90% and 110% calculated from the slope. Well, this, this performance criteria is important for, for a kind of a validation and um, a, a reliable result, final result, particularly if it is quantitative. Um, sorry. Um, but for, for to have a, a fluorescent signal, we, we have, you use mainly two approaches. One is use of uh, um, universal dye like cyber green, which is a, a dye that intercalates in all uh, double strand DNA sequences. When the in the phase of the extension, we can have the signal, uh, the, we can read fluorescent signal. Uh, the second main approach is the use of specific probes. There is a, a huge number of types of probes. Uh, I selected Tuckman or hydrolysis probes, which is main used in our research. Uh, it is uh, an oligonucleotide specifically designed to uh, anneal in the, between the, the primer region in the specific target region. Um, and it has chemical modification, a reporter and, and a quencher. And uh, when the enzyme starts to, to um, amplify the sequence, to, to synthesize the double sequence, uh, it uh, cleaves the, the oligonucleotide, leaving the reporter uh, free in the solution. And in such conditions, it will, will uh, give the fluorescent signal. This approach is much more sensitivity, sensitive than the, the sorry, sorry, specific than the, the, um, the universal dyes. Since the universal dyes, they need 
to be further analyzed using melting curve analysis that we can confirm if we are uh, obtaining one single fragment, expected single fra fragment, or, or we are having some unspecific amplification that we should uh, further optimize the assay. Uh, using this approach of melting curve analysis, if we have um, high resolution real time PCR equipment together with the new generation dyes like Evergreen, it's an example, uh, we can perform um, a technique called high resolution melting analysis. It allows differentiating fragments, uh, similar, very similar fragments with small nucleotide variations among them. So we can uh, group uh, or discriminate uh, different uh, uh, organisms depending on, the, on those differences. For instance, we can differentiate uh, uh, closely related species or even varieties. I will show then some examples. Uh, another approach also used for species discrimination and even authentication is DNA barcoding. Although we, I will not present some examples about it, um, I will describe briefly, briefly um, that it consists on the analysis of the variability of short nucleotide sequences within the genome uh, that are called barcodes. Uh, they allow in the, the identification, differentiation of closely related organisms globally is this main pro purpose. The barcodes can be from several uh, parts of the, the cell. Uh, if we are talking about plant species differentiation, uh, there is not a single barcode that is the most uh, recommended or the best. No, we, can ha we have to test among chloroplastic or mitochondrial or nuclear region. Uh, regarding anim animal species differentiation, cytochrome oxidase subunit one is the, the, normally the best one. Well, simply uh, DNA barcoding consists on PCR amplification of a barcode region with universal primers that can, they can target several, a group of uh, organisms that we are analyzing, um, followed by sequencing of typically amplicons of 600 base pair and comparing with pre-existing databases of sequences using bioinformatics. Uh, the problem when applied to foods is the use of such big, big fragments. It's, although it is considered globally short nucleotide sequences, in fact, for food analysis, they are too big. So normally this is not well applied to processed food, but we can combine the use of barcode region, short barcode region with other approach, which I will uh, show about regarding the use of high resolution melting analysis with DNA barcodes. So I will show now some um, application uh, that examples of research we have developed in our laboratory. Um, I will start with the, the work we have done some years ago about the authentication of gay meat uh, alera. Well, as everybody knows, it is made with uh, uh, bread mixed with the um, uh, debone meat, small pieces of debone boiled meat and among other ingredients and spices. Uh, the mixture is stuffed into an intestinal casing, smoked, uh, and then we have our delicious alheira. We have a huge amount of variety of alheira, including, <laughs> including um, the game meat alheira, which is supposed to be from several species of, uh, of animals from uh, avian species, or male species like parches, uh, parches, pheasant, veal, and so on. So we have done uh, the development of the um, several uh, species-specific PCR assays targeting. In this example, I will show you about these avian species from the partridge, pheasant, quail, chicken, and those most commonly used, chicken and turkey. Uh, we, we reach a sensitivity down to 0.1% in using mixed mixtures, and we were able to apply in several samples. I hear we I have 15 samples in the case 
of identification of duck. And I can show you that these three samples, uh, we expected to have duck and there was no duck. So now I will present the resumed results, um, authentication results of the 18 Alleira samples uh, from uh, uh, regarding avian MML species, those most commonly used. Well, the, the fact is those most expensive meats were missing in several of the samples like dark and, and pear trees. On the, and on the other side, the, the shippers meat, meats like uh, poultry, pork and cow, they were present and not labeled and they should not be there. They, I think we, they were substituting other uh, meats that should be um, added to, to the alleyers. Well, other work, that, uh, resuming work, regards the detection of food allergen. We, in our work, I will just present this brief application. We have also a lot of research regarding detection of food allergens and also the allergen city of foods and other research work. Here I present the example of using, um, preparing model um, hams and model um, sausages. This is important. To, to prepare the models and to process them because we have to be to uh, analyze the feasibility of our uh, assays in in processed foods we have to to have the the, the calibration models um, adequate for each type of processed foods we were able to verify that uh, with processing the changes were not uh, um, generally uh, noted except for the some um, analytic performance uh, was affected uh, more in the quantitative analysis regarding the autoclaved sausages we we got uh, adequate um, adequate performance um, i criteria, performance data, and then we, we moved on to apply to uh, commercial sausages. We applied to 25 uh, soybean, uh, not sausages, sorry, um, hams and mortadellas. Here I showed the resumed application of uh, hams and mortadellas. Uh, we could quantify uh, soybean in 11 products. Uh, all mortadellas contain the soybean, so I, we, I, I got the impression that this type of products we are eating <laughs> a lot of soybean. And the three samples, the, the most worry of the thing about this was see, three samples, not labeling um, soybean, they contain two of them, they contain uh, quite high amounts, particularly the, this one and these, uh, these 23. Uh, considerably high amounts of soybean and they did not declare soybean. This is an important health issue because the soybean is considered an allergenic food and should be mandatorily labeled on, the, on this type of food. Well, another interesting work regarding the authentication of saffron is the most expensive spice in the world. Um, and this is produced from the stigma of Crocus sativa, sativus. Uh, and because of such high price, it is potentially adulterated with several sources. One of them is uh, safflower. Uh, it can be added to, to saffron to adulterate it. We, we were able to develop a quantitative model that was... Um, successfully validated. We could, uh, we have mixtures of the uh, safflower in saffron uh, and could quantify between 20% and 0.1%. When we applied to some samples, we, we in fact did not find um, any type of uh, adulteration uh, detection. Another interesting work regarding now application of the high resolution melting analysis uh, targeting mini barcode. Now we used the, the approach of barcoding. We mixed the approach of barcoding with, together with this technique. It is uh, quite favorable because we use short fragments with the high resolution melting analysis and we can do in a single assay, we can differentiate several species at the same time. Here we were able to differentiate five shrimp species from the same family and also 
to discriminate others from other families because we have a huge amount of species from different families regarding the, the, the crustaceans use as food and we could discriminate uh, in different groups. We also, uh, this method was validated with um, uh, sequencing. Normally, we, when we develop this method, we sequence to, to verify, to identify the differences that can justify such uh, discrimination. And identically, we performed another method regarding the application of high resolution melting to differentiate codfish species. Um, the true uh, Gadus Moroa was successfully uh, discriminating from the other that could be uh, used like uh, Polok, Polok, Alaska Polok site and Pacific code. Um, another interesting work was the entomological origin of honey. Um, honey uh, in Europe is produced mainly from Apis mellifera. However, in Asia, Asia, the most expensive, higher, highly valued honey is produced in from another species called Apis serana. So this is what a kind of collaboration with a, an Asian group that we could collect some honey and honeybees from the Asia and uh, to de develop a specific, species specific um, essay to uh, happy Serena, also using real-time PCR, and we could discriminate honeys from uh, um, Vietnam, happy Serena, from all the other honeys, honeys from European Europe, including, including one honey also from Vietnam, but it was uh, made from, uh, produced from Apis mellifera. Um, almost finally with the um, application of authentication, botanical authentication of supplements. Um, we recently have visited one PhD student, Liliana is doing the, the, uh, the research about this, um, focusing on the authentication of um, herbal infusion and plant or dietary supplements. This is a very important uh, issue uh, regarding the health because mixing or, or swapping the, the plants, we can have different health claims, and different health effects about plants. This case was about the Korean, Korean ginseng, most common or the called so-called true ginseng uh, of herbal infusion, plant food supplements, identifying one of them not complying. Um, now regarding the authentication of a variety authentication of Italian rice based on the, the polymorphism analysis in the Waxi gene. It is a gene that is related with important properties of risotto rice. Risotto, to be a risotto, it has to be a texture, uh, technological properties that can uh, uh, associate it to the rice. It is provided by one gene. E, and these um, characteristics, this modification in the, the gene were used successfully used with high resolution melting analysis to differentiate Carnaroli, a high valued rice in, in um, Italy, from other varieties. Uh, we applied to several commercial samples from Portugal, Italy, and could identify five not really complying with labeling. Now the final example. <laughs> regards GMO detection. I will show only our last work about GMO detection, not particularly in the Portuguese market. Uh, well, I should say that in Portuguese market, we don't, uh, the, from the past study, we don't, do not have to worry about that present. It is only about the traces of GMO. But these, essay, these results regard Argelian samples was a, um, a PhD student was doing that research in our lab. She brought several maize containing foods. Uh, for that analysis, we needed to, to do two calibration curves. Depending on the, on the event, we have in GMO <laughs> detection, we have a lot of target events we can identify. And um, one of them, the detection mandatory is the uh, endogenous gene, gene formed species. 
together with the calibration from the event of the modification. Well, the application to several samples, here I selected. Um, well, give me a little surprise because I could find several uh, foods with more than 100%. The percentage is calculated with this uh, formula, um, which says that we can have several events in the same food or stuck events. Stuck events means that they are crossing gen different genetically modified uh, um, plants with each other, and one can have more, more than one event in the same plant. So, well, really, the foods in Argelia are really quite, have really quite high number of genetically modified organisms. So just finalize just an, a little overview of the importance of food authentication in the, in the scenario of food safety and food quality, and the importance of the PCR-based methods as highly powerful tools to, for the unequivocal identification of a lot of sources species we in foods even difficult foods like honey and plant food supplements with high sensitivity quantitative analysis and differentiating even at the level of variety well thank you very much for your attention just some <laughs> some of the people know, that have worked for all this research um will i'm available for any questions Thank you, Isabel, for this uh, interesting uh, talk. I did learn a lot and I have some questions, but lots of people already started um, asking questions on the chat. But I will ask here the audience if we have any particular question. Okay. Uh, if not, uh, I have some questions, but I, I will, I will leave them for later. Uh, there is one question from João Niza Ribeiro. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is in Portuguese. Uh, so I'll try to translate. Um, it regards, um, so it says congratulations for the excellent presentation. Um, do you believe that these methods could discriminate uh, meat from the, the Portuguese um, Hacer. Um, uh, I'll read this in Portuguese. Um, discriminar carne de raças produtoras de DOP, como arauquesa, barrosã, carne de outros legumes. So apparently, maybe Isabel can translate this, but. Yes, I think it is, it is possible. Of course, in this case, we have to use uh, like fingerprint markers, like uh, uh, instead of the, we cannot use a single region, for instance, we can use, uh, for instance, one of the, the, the methods is using microsatellites, which is a group of markers targeted with uh, a set of at least 10 primer pairs. Um, Barcoding, I don't believe, <laughs> because it is uh, it is, it can discriminate species in, among spe closely related species, but not uh, really uh, varieties. In this case, breeds breeds. But using other other fingerprint methods like microsatellites, like or uh, single nucleotide polymorphism, I think we can uh, we can go that uh, in that way. It is possible. There is also a similar question for cheese. Yes, you? same thing for cheese. Yes, some time ago we thought uh, trying to, to uh, we have done some authentication of uh, cheese from um, from using um, uh, one has uh, one breed of trazos montos. Uh, Shura, I think Shura, something like that. But in that case, we only targeted the, the goat species, not really the, the, the breed. But uh, using fingerprint um, markers, we can go there. Um, any question in the audience, Mario? Thank you very much. Uh, First of all, I would like to congratulate you 
for the presentation. Second thing I would like to say that I'm a little bit frightened <laughs> <laughs> with everything that you said. And uh, now the question, the question is who controls all this? So I go to the supermarket, uh, I see something like I, a I data, believe, like I believe the, that Azai controls, but not, but not you, us. <laughs> so you control, you know, uh, but uh, the consumer, how does he or she know that uh, what is written in the label is right? There is not uh, a fraud. Uh, well, I mean, who, 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 who controls this? Because, for instance, I remember um, some years ago I was in the Azores and uh, I was staying in a, in a Azorian house and they told me they could not um, serve the, the jam that they prepared themselves because this was not allowed with, um, anyway. But if you go to the supermarket and buy jams, I mean, maybe you run uh, greater risks than if you buy jams that are homemade. So produce caseiros, I believe that are not allowed anymore. Well, in that case, I, I... But industrial adulterated products, they are allowed. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, well, uh, um, regarding Alheira, what I was saying about at that time, <laughs> the TV <laughs> oh, went to, to went to um, our lab to do a kind of report, but that that is not the, the well. I think the final result was not the the, the one we we don't it did not ask to to go there it was not the the one we wanted to transmit to the consumer. Well, this this type of the the, the analysis should be we should have more than control more regulation about it. I think it is on the. <laughs> I think yes, as I. There is an authority, as I should, is an authority for that. Yes, it's an authority. I, I believe that veterinarian, uh, yeah. veterinarian professionals are, are in charge of many of those Approved. Well, I think before. Well, we, we food uh, we food they should uh, comply all the all the good practices in production. They should obey to the the, the conform, conformity analysis, all the controls that are required to each type of food is. This type of but, but the. After in the, it is in the in the shell of supermarket, the control it is um, in charge of the, the authorities like Azai, or the the own supermarket should also be critically analyzing, for instance, the the the, uh, the reports about food, all the information about food, like uh, origin. If it is raw food, they have to, to choose, they can choose origin. Uh, or if it is the product product produced food, they are, they are also can also critically choose some industrial instead of other, but they do not analyze. Maybe I think I believe that some of them might uh, uh, control some foods once in a while, say, sending some samples to the lab. I yes. believe they do those big supermarkets like uh, I don't know, continent. Uh, I think it might do something like that. There is a comment here from, from a colleague from CIMAR saying that uh, big supermarkets do have uh, chain food control. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that um, it, is, it is supposed to be controlled before by ASAI. I also know uh, that uh, the Association for the Defense of the Consumer, they, they also perform some mm -hmm. random tests from time yeah. to time. Um, maybe this is not so much discussed as it should be, uh, as it is with medicines, for instance. But uh, but uh, that's the information that we that we we are aware that it should be controlled before going to the supermarket and also on 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 shelves. 
So the big supermarkets, the supermarkets should do that. For instance, I know that uh, the, the quality of uh, beer, for instance, it, it is analyzed, um, it is analyzed frequently by the, the producers of the beer and also in, in the supermarkets. They go to the supermarket and they take some samples and then they, they analyze for it. But I think it depends uh, on, the, on the shops, on the supermarkets and also on the producers. Many producers do, are very interested in, in, in granting the quality. I, I know some people. No, no, no. It's, Yeah, that's true. No, it should be it should be discussed. Well, yes, I'm, I think I, globally, I globally there is a, a, a control globally, but uh, some. Yes, but what uh, Mari is saying that this should be discussed more and more, and, and people should be more aware. And uh, I think some problem. Well, the, the, the worst case I told you about it is give, regard the small producers. For instance, in the case of Valleira, we, we selected samples. Our purpose was to have the highest number of samples representing gain meat Valleira. So we bought them in the Trasmontes, in that region with its main producers, directly, not really in supermarket. I should say you, to you that uh, the only sample that complied with all species was from a big industry. The only sample, there was only one. All the others missed, or some of them only said, gave me Talheira. Um, and in fact, they didn't have a single meat that was like uh, game or, or more expensive, like luck. Um, so this is to say that I think sometimes we want uh, more, more regional, uh, more traditional products, but sometimes those that are not controlled and are those easier to find the adulteration because the others more industrialized, particularly those that with big brands, uh, they are more worried, they, they worry to have high quality products. I think that uh, I understood with practical analysis of these products. There is a comment here from Joanna Moreno saying that uh, um, she believes that Europe is one of the safest places uh, as I and DGAV, which I believe is an association of veterinary veterinaries, um, um, they have an important role. So, and there is res legislation about that. Yeah, can you comment on that? Mario, that is. Uh, Every year, if you go to the European Commission to the recall um, um, reports, mm -hmm. you can see a lot of um, foods that are recalled from the supermarkets because of uh, things that happen during production. For instance, the identification of a specific um, like um, antibiotic that was given to a um, a cow or something and the products that were made with that uh, <laughs> meat in specific are uh, we draw from commercialization also uh, with other things with allergen bad labeling uh, but it's it's really a lot of products that's why they have been uh, every year increasing the um, uh, I think the the verification of all these problems that can happen to increase the security and the safety of all consumers. So I think there is a good job being done. Of course, it sometimes it's made time. after it's on the on the supermarket. Uh, some of the consumers still get um, <laughs> the bad products. Sometimes they are not danger to the global population but for specific parts of them yes uh, the other of course this should be done before uh, as you know in the cases of the the um, drugs and the, the um, th that we buy on the, on the pharmacies 
we have authorities that controls before because you need to get approval for, for their commercialization. But still every year they are subjected to different studies and sometimes after 20 or 30 years they are get out of the shelves because they, they are identified some potential problems. So with food, <laughs> it can happen the same. Okay. Uh, so is there any other question? Uh, I believe we reached the end of the session. So thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you all for, for listening and for all the interesting questions that you have posed. Thank you. Thank you.